souvenirs and gift shopping. And now, El Paso History with Melissa Sargent and Jackson Pohl. Hey, good morning, and today is December 4th, and we're talking about El Paso gifts you can give for Christmas, live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, TV streaming live on YouTube channel, and on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Streaming live on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When. And Melissa, good morning. Good morning, everyone. <coughs> it's a beautiful day out today. And yeah. this is where we say... Texas history, history begins in El Paso. Paso. Okay. Hot me off there. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's great to be here. And I want people to know that they can also find us audio streaming live on the internet via KTSMRadio.com where you can listen to the show. So, you know, we can anywhere you go in the country or even in Europe, you can hear us. You have a history moment, I'm guessing. Yes, I do. It's about the Christmas Day Battle of Brazito, just Ooh. north of El Paso. It's always a good you know, have battle story for Christmas. You know. uh, well, it, it happened. <laughs> it that's happened, that's the point. Happened. Yeah, and that's what we do, the history of El Paso. So, hey, we've got a uh, an unusual show today. It's uh, It started out to be, let's talk about books about El Paso, and I expanded that out to, let's talk about gifts from El Paso, stores that are unique to El Paso. And uh, we have a lot to talk about here because we have in the uh, studio here, we have Veronica Carvajal. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome here. And you have a book? I do. It's um, it's called Toma, 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 and it's based on my mom's childhood dog in Ciudad Juarez. Oh, interesting stuff here. And Mr. Murphy, Jim Murphy is here. What are you Good morning. Have? What are you I have, have El Paso, 1850 to 1950. And that's an interesting ser- ser- little book there. And look who's here on the left-hand side. Hello, everybody. Peace How Marcus. Peace Good morning. How are you today? Thanks for having me, Jackson. Thanks for coming in here. And uh, I may have overbooked the show because we got a lot of high priced talent in here. Yeah, that's right. Interesting you know, things we got going very on here. Talented and we got people. several callers going to call in throughout the next two hours. So we do appreciate you joining us here and, and talking about things. Veronica, let's start with you. You have a, uh, a book uh, that, that and, and speak right into that gizmo there. Mm-hmm. And you have a book there that's kind of unusual. Tell us about that. Um, so, you know, I started writing this book when I was in law school, which is 2001. It took. Um, <laughs> I don't know, 17 years to actually get it done. It's um, it's bilingual and it's um, actually pretty lengthy in terms of the number of words in the book. So it kind of breaks apart some of the uh, children's book genre rules. Um, and I did that on purpose. Um, the book is about my family's history. It's about um, my mom's uh, childhood dog, which was found in um, my grandmother's uh, trash pit in Ciudad Juarez. And it's part one. Part two will be about mostly about Juarez and about the topography of the time, which has changed a lot. And um, it's a it's a very unique book, I think, because one, it's based in Ciudad Juarez um, at a time when um, we didn't have violence. Uh, we didn't have fencing around houses. People lived in a in a very calm and safe way. And um, it's also about a lot of lessons that I learned from my grandparents. I was very grateful that. I was born in 1976, but I got to know my great grandparents. I got to know my grandparents who raised me. And I learned a lot about the value of observation, of paying attention. And so what's in this book um, and the book that's coming is, is really about how important it is for us to teach children to pay attention to the environment, to the animals around them, to the people around them, to listen with their ears and their hearts. Um, because I think those lessons are what led to me becoming an environmental lawyer, becoming an activist, becoming um, a lover of history, um, a lover of social justice, because my eyes were opened up and I was encouraged to ask questions um, and I was discouraged to look away. And so this is about not only saving a dog, but really about compassion and the fact that you need to have your eyes wide open um, beyond things, right? Like I've been very active with Duranguito. I've been an, um, an attorney. Like I've had the honor to represent people who, who live in, in Duranguito, um, especially Antonia Morales. And, you know, if you go to Duranguito now, you might just see a, a you know, an old buildings um, that are falling apart and you may not see any value in them, right? You see that they're in the way of a sports arena. But if you look at, at Duranguito with new eyes, you're going to see not only the value of the history there, but also decades and decades, centuries of discrimination against people of color in this community and the undervaluing of our role in founding this community, both in terms of the buildings, the jobs, and also the living history, right? Toñita, who's one of the, who's the only tenant living there, one of two residents, 
um, started working in this country when she was 13. She understands economic development from a very different perspective. She's now 93 years old, but her voice is often discounted. And so um, I really want people to think um, in a new way about some of these spaces, right? Not why are they, not, oh, look, they're dilapidated, let's get rid of them, but rather why are they dilapidated? What kind of history are we missing here? What and makes some them it, important, basically. What makes them important, and also some of it's gonna be uncomfortable. Right. El Paso has a lot of discrimination to deal with, um, especially south of the highway. And we see that now. We see that in the fact uh, the freeway, that, you mean? Uh, the freeway. And yeah. it used to be south of the railroad. Um, but the 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 problem, I, I think, is that we don't have enough spaces to talk about that and to talk about that in a way that is going to help us come up with some solutions as to, you know, even if you look at right now, the redistricting efforts for the for the city. Um, District eight runs all along. Um, the river. So it starts in the upper valley and it ends in the tummy in the um, uh, Delta neighborhood. Does that make any sense to you? It does not make any sense. It's totally <laughs> gerrymandered. Um, so also let's think about, well, then why is it that that is one of the main reasons that those districts south of the highway have been neglected? And people might just drive by and think like, oh, why do people live like this? Well, there are many reasons why they live that way. And it's not necessarily their own individual um, fault. It's the fact that they have been um, they have been um, disenfranchised. They haven't had representation to speak, speak up for them. And it dates back to centuries. Right. When we look at the number of historic districts in El Paso, how many of them are of uh, barrios and communities that were founded and inhabited by Mexican Americans primarily. I think only one, Chihuahuita. And, you know, I, I live in Memorial, um, I live by Memorial Park in Manhattan Heights. My house is 100 years old. I have to get permission to paint the exterior of my yeah, house. Of course. Yeah, if I lived in Segundo Barrio in a house that was 150 years old, I could demolish it by simply getting a permit because there is no historic overlay, there is no protection, there is no valuing of that community. And I've looked into why this is, I've looked at, there's a great, if you Google mapping inequality, um, there is, uh, it's basically um, a compilation of uh, policies that segregated communities. And it looks at the way that our national lending institutions um, categorize different neighborhoods, including in El Paso. And that led to people being able to borrow money to improve their properties. And the language that is used to describe these South Side neighborhoods is just jarring. It's really something that we need to really think about today and how we combat the issues that, per that still um, affect those communities. You see a great unfairness in all this. I do. I do, and I do because I know I'm an attorney at Texas Rio Grande Legal Aid. I've been one for 17 years, and I work with these communities day in and day out um, as a as a landlord, um, tenant attorney dealing with rentals, um, as someone combating um, you know uh, the lack of affordable housing in the Tamisal, the pollution in the Tamisal, um, the the problem of I expanding I-10 and taking away homes and creating more pollution for some of these South Side communities, the closure of the schools by the Tamisal, by EPISD just well, recently, the, all of those things. The pollution actually is a, is a, a valley event more than just uh, from both sides of the border yeah and that's something yeah. that actually we're going to be maybe um, getting involved with because as you may know the epa just recently as a result of a lawsuit from the chamisal neighborhood um said hey el paso's actually been lying about its ozone attainment standard and it is in on attainment and so the you have an ozone problem el paso as well as a pm problem as well as a carbon monoxide problem and and right now, El Paso, like New Mexico, has relied on what's called a 179B waiver saying, but for Mexico, we would be in attainment. But the uh, fact yeah. is that, hey, Juarez does not have a refinery. They don't have the same number of power plants that we do. They don't have the same number. You know, we have a lot of tra semi-traffic. I mean, if you've been on I-10 any time recently, it is a lot of semi-traffic. They heat their houses differently, though. And that's one of the issues, yeah. right? That is probably one of the bigger sources is the fact that during wintertime, um, people may have to burn trash. But that's also been... We, we're, we're looking at how we can actually quantify that because, um, again, I think it goes back to like our perception about Juarez. Juarez never had a circle. A circle polluted Juarez for, you know, a century. And we haven't yet dealt with that pollution that, that is in their soil. But people, I, I sat on different um, organizations, the Joint Advisory Committee, for instance, I would go to all of their meetings when I first got out of college. And it was always like, oh, it's Juarez. 
They don't have paved roads. They burn their trash to stay warm. Um, their cars, you know, are not are old and junky. And it was like, okay, yes, but also we have these huge point sources, right? I just named some, El Paso Electric, Asarco, the refinery, that they don't. So we are not comparing apples to apples, and we need to get real about what is happening to our air so that we can find solutions, because my lungs don't care where that pollution is coming from. Right. They just care that it's there. Yeah. And so... Um, well, like today, you saw it today. Yes. Uh, yes. Today. It's, I mean... Inversion, not The there. inversions. The inversions along the river, um, especially around the Bridge of the Americas, are always really ugly. I always thought we should put those, those big uh, windmills out there and, and not so much have them generate power is to turn them on and blow, blow, that, the way, blow, move the blow, air blow that stuff out of here. But I don't think we can pull that off just yet. And and yet it happens all the time. And this is not anything new for anybody in El Paso or Juarez. You, you, this is how we are. And it's really a shame. We may have to come back and ask you some details about your book in a bit. Uh, but we need to take a break here at this point here on the El Paso History Radio Show. It's an interesting topic we're talking about, gifts about El Paso. And again, do you have the picture of the, of the book to put up the – and Tell us the title of your book. Um, toma, Toma, Toma. And um, again, this was, um, it's from the 1960s. My my grandmother um, uh, was a dermaphobe and she had a trash pit in the backyard. And one day they found a puppy in the backyard. And, oh, dear. and they were trying to lure her out. And they kept saying, Toma, you know, Toma, some, a hot dog, Toma, to, to get the puppy to jump out. And Toma means come here. And uh, finally, my grandfather had to use a ladder to remove the puppy. But the book is really about that story. And it's um, I I was told early on only Dr. Seuss can rhyme. And so I replaced rhyme with rhythm. There's well, a lot of rhythm in the book. We're going to ask you to go through the book uh, in a little, little while and, and give us some more details on okay, that. Awesome. And uh, we got social media going on here in some fashion. We had a whole bunch of people. Uh, Andrew, you got some, or Melissa, you got some? I'm trying to get there. Okay. Oh, yeah, we got a lot of people tuning in and chiming in right now, including uh, Monica Cervantes from Las Cruces, uh, Maria Baragan from West Valley City, Utah, um, Marjorie Ravellas Benton from Northeast, Angie Salazar, and Mark Howe from Pueblo, Colorado, Larry Kendrick up in Las Cruces, and uh, Patricia Medici from uh, Sunset Heights. We know where she she lives, don't we, Howe? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, she's a local here. Fair enough. All right. We'll take a break here. If we uh, had a phone call, Melissa Sargent, what would be that number? Well, it could be 915-544-5876 or 915-544-KTSM. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate, call Certified Property Manager Ray Baca, 915-592-4549, 592-4549. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to YouTube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. What's all the buzz about nasal irrigation and navage, navage, navage? And should I try it? Here's the science. Airborne germs invade through your nose. It's the body's air filter for trapping allergens and viruses. When your nose gets clogged, it's less effective and germs multiply. Eventually, your immune system can get overwhelmed and you get sick. Nasal irrigation is an effective, all-natural way to clean your nose. It's not a drug. It's more like plumbing. Saline goes in one nostril, around the back of the nose, and out the other nostril, flushing out mucus and germs. I'm Martin Hoke, and I invented Navage to make cleaning your nose easy. It's the world's only nose cleaner with powered suction. Navage pulls out the bad stuff so you can breathe better, sleep deeper, snore less, and feel healthier. At Walgreens, CVS, Rite Aid, Target, Bed Bath, and Walmart. Or go to Navage.com for a free gift with purchase. Over 2 million sold. Navage, N-A-V-A-G-E. Clean nose, healthy life. Have you thought about getting dental implants? Has someone told you that implants cost three, four, five, six thousand dollars a tooth? Here's something much better to think about. Affordable dental implants from 1995implants.com, the El Paso dental office where beautiful, 
top quality, long lasting dental implants are as low as $1,995 per tooth. That price includes the implant, abutment, and crown, which many other places charge extra for. At 1995implants.com, we also offer a free consultation, free standard x rays, and convenient financing. 1995implants.com, you're going to love your new smile, and your friends and family will be telling you how great you look. Best of all, your dental implants are very affordable if you come to 1995implants.com. For more information, see our website, 1995implants.com. That's 1995implants.com. Se habla español. This holiday season, don't buy the can, buy the box to help support those in need in our community. In this most wonderful and generous time of year, instead of donating canned goods, give directly to our local El Pasoans Fighting Hunger Food Bank, where $1 can mean seven meals to help end hunger for our neighbors. Do the most good by donating directly for less than $14 can buy the box to feed a local child for a whole month or increase your donation to cover them for the entire year. Visit El PasoansFightingHunger.org today to support your community by the box news radio 690 ktsm el paso and now let's turn back the pages of time and return to the el paso history show brought to you by patrick tuttle coldwell banker heritage real estate 915-585-7777 pepe's new mexican restaurant 6761 donovan drive by monterey asset management by Mission Del Rey, 1421 Lee Trevino with El Paso souvenirs and gift shopping. By Keystone Heritage Park on Donovan Drive, 915-584-0563. Here again, El Paso History with Melissa Sargent and Jackson Polk. The El Paso History Show, as you know, on Facebook. And uh, you can go there for our weekly promo announcements. And did you, do, did you happen to catch how many uh, were up there this year, this, uh, uh, this week? It was, uh, 7,794 7, people reached, reached. Yes. and on that. And so that's a, that's a popular thing we do. We also have a TV channel, and that's what I'm going to tell you about right now. YouTube.com, go there, search El Paso History TV, and you'll find a dozen uh, El Paso Gold DVDs I produced over the last 20 years. And uh, these were labors of love because there's not a whole lot, whole lot of money in producing TV in El Paso, uh, like some other cities that apparently are able to afford their history. But anyway, so I did what I could. And they're on there for free. Go take a look at those. And also TV segments we did on ABC7, KBIA. They actually aired 2018 uh, to uh, 2020. And 20 segments that are now archived. Also, YouTube.com, El Paso History TV. And we had a lot of comments that come on there on a regular basis. So take a look at some of that stuff. What do you got? Well, also, I want to talk about kicking off the holidays with Luminarias by the Lake at Keystone Heritage Park, located at 4200 Donovan Drive in El Paso's Upper Valley. Starts at 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. And it'll be, tonight is the last night, uh, being Saturday, December 4th. And you can stroll through the gardens and wetlands, illuminated by thousands of luminarias, musical entertainment, and holiday refreshments. And it's only $5 adult, $3 military, and a dollar for children, 12 and under. And it's, it's a great event. Last night I was there. It was amazing. People were just, they walk in and they were just blown away by the park because we close, turn off all the lights except for certain pavilions and entertainment areas. And they walk through the gardens lit only by luminarias. And if they dropped a 20 in there, that's okay with you. Too. Oh, hey, no problem. I'm not proud. I'll take 20s. It was fun <laughs> sitting at the gate. And people walked in and they were excited to be there. But when they left, they were totally blown away. They were like, this is magnificent. It was wonderful. And we have the uh, children's uh, choir has been singing there. And they were, these kids were great. And they stayed there for, well, from four, uh, you know, six until. 8 30 and sang and sang we had to get them off the stage they were singing and everybody was having a good spirit. time yeah and, and it, it, yeah and you can buy poinsettias and all the funds go to keystone heritage park because it's all managed and run by volunteers so please come on out and support us and get in the christmas and that's spirit. again tonight what time and it starts at 6 p.m it'll go to 8 30 p.m and it's located at 4200 donovan drive that's easy to find yeah. And you also have a story about Donovan in the next uh, top of the uh, top of the next hour. Yeah, the, the reason Donovan Boulevard's name is why did it get that yeah. name? All right, we're talking about uh, with uh, authors here uh, in the studio, Jim. I'm going to ask you, Jim uh, Murphy. Uh, I'm going to ask you to uh, give a, a brief overview of your book. We have a very short segment here, All right. and after that, we uh, well, I'm expecting one caller, and then after that, we'll get back into your book in a minute. And how you're so patient, I love it. Uh, good to see you. Al Marcus is here. Uh, Veronica Carvajal, Jim Murphy. Murphy, Mr. Jim, you have a book that you, uh, it's an Arcadia book. Tell, what is, what right. is Arcadia? 
Well, Arcadia is a publishing company of, off the eastern coast, and I think in 2008, 2007, they moved into the Austin district, and they blanketed the southwest with proposals to write for the Images of America series that they had, and they sent a an envelope with four or five copies of different books that they'd already done uh, to the Museum of History, and it, was, it just laid there, the envelope, so I opened it up eventually. I brought it over to Barbara to see if she was interested in Barbara the, Angus, Barbara Angus, the curator of the Museum of History, and she said she wasn't interested at the time, so I thought, well, it's a picture book. I'll give it a shot, and uh, you had access. Yeah. Well, where'd you get the pictures? I got the pictures from UTEP, from their uh, special library up there. What's it called? Special, special collections. collections. Special yeah. collections. Sonicson. And downtown, the main library. And I looked at more than 8,000 photos and whittled it down to 200. And uh, it was a great project. It took me eight months to do. And the book, from the time I signed the contract to the time it came out, was about a year. And it came out in 2009, and it's still selling through Arcadia at this time. Well, that's you can get it through Arcadia. Do you have a place uh, locally that they are available? Locally, they're usually, well, I have on my website, jamesrobertmurphy.com, that they're available on. And I think they're uh, still available in, uh, what's the name of that, Barnes & Noble and a few stores like that. At Walgreens, I think. So. Walgreens, Walgreens and Walgreens. Walgreens. We have I mean, had them there at times. Yeah, I see they a great job of distribution, that's for sure. Okay. Well, take a look at that. Pull out a picture or two. We've got a couple minutes left before we All have right. to go anywhere. And and uh, you can, if you do it right, you can see the camera and you can see the output of the camera. Don't touch the camera, but get the picture okay, up close okay. well, here, here's to the camera. Yeah, go ahead and, just, and uh, you, uh, you get it get it up closer, right up right up on the camera up here. You may have to stand up and just show it to us. Yeah, and uh, see what you got here. We do this boxing. Okay, boxing. Now boxing is there on uh, boxing. And what was that about? Well, back in the day when before the real grand was controlled, uh, the border would change all the time. So at that time, uh, I forget the date, but the, there was supposed to be a big boxing match here in El Paso. But then boxing got outlawed. One of the uh, Christian communities or something complained about boxing. So the river had changed course, so they just took the boxing match across the river and held it over there. It wasn't in the river bed? No, it was actually on a little island. It was on a little it island. A bit of sand. They, they, yeah. they moved it, it over to Mexico so they could ha still have the fight. But they moved it over there. And they could stand on the bank of the Rio Grande in, in El, so. El Paso and, and take a look at it. Bat Masterson was one of the referees. Oh, my God. The famous Bat Masterson. Wow. And I believe, if if I'm correct, uh, White Earp was also involved in it and was there. Oh, what? A, and, and read the caption that you put on that thing. Well, I don't know. Let's see. In February 19th, 1930, a newspaper article by Reverend Adolf Hoffman, he states in 1896, the El Paso Ministerial Association prevented the holding of the Bob Fitzsimmons and Peter Mahar championship bout. The fight was originally scheduled for El Paso. The perseverance of the ministers paid off, and the Texas legislature passed, passed a law prohibiting prize fighting in Texas. Governor Charles Culberson sent in the Texas Rangers to stop the fight. A couple hundred boxing fans took the train to El Paso to Lane Tree, Texas, tramped through the sand mixed with mud, crossed the Patoon Bridge, and eventually reached a crude ring just inside Mexico. Mahal was routed in 1 minute and 33 seconds. So yeah, actually, in Mexico. All that money spent, all the people <laughs> that traveled so long to get there, like, what a minute, it's like, oh, he's down on and, the ground. So it was actually in Mexico. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah, and actually, Mexico didn't have legal, they didn't allow legal gambling in Mexico at that time, so there were hmm. issues on that, too. But in Langtree, I guess, apparently, at uh, Judge Way Beans Bar area there, what was that? The, 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 the oh, what was that bar called? The, the Lang Tree, was it? No, no, it was uh, named after the, the singer. Lil, oh, I'll Lil, remember. Lily? But, well, uh, I'll look it up, maybe. Yeah, but they did, they did uh, you know, some gambling and some kind of interesting things there. Too. But there, there's one more photo in here that's always fascinated me, and I, I don't have access to it. I'm not going to look it up. But there's 235 people, I'll say, men, hanging uh, in this, off these trees in. <laughs> Watching the fight. I think that was in Mexico, too. But nonetheless, all the, there's a picture of you know seventy something of them hanging here, and supposedly uh, what's his name? Uh, Master. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, he was behind it. Who's the famous Mexican guy here? Villa. Yeah, Pancho Villa. Pancho Villa. Supposedly yeah. responsible for that hanging oh, of two hundred and thirty some. Well, what do you mean hanging like? Yeah, hanging, hanging off dead. trees. Dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, dead, dead people. All right. Well, mm. But they bet on the wrong. No. Why don't you come down that street? You can't miss it. Oh, my God. <laughs> I thought oh, you meant hanging in the trees just watching. No, 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 no. no. Sorry. Sorry. Totally. Totally. That's a different matter. Well, yeah. And by the way, Via, what a character. We'll get to 
hear, hear about him uh, bigger in, in a couple of couple of months as a, a national uh, TV story coming out about yeah. him. It's going to be kind, kind of bizarre. All right, taking a break here on the El Paso Vista Radio Show. Uh, we're going to come, and don't don't go away, Jim Murphy. We're going to ask you to pull out some more pictures and, and take a look at some of those as we All go right. through this. And, and Murphy, and you you are now a retired type? I am. I've been retired for three and a half years now. And you're in the city of El Paso. From the, from the Museum of mm-hmm. History. Mm-hmm. Are you still Fair playing, enough. though? Still yeah. playing in your band? Yeah. Oh, okay. we need to hear some about, yeah. about some of your music as well. Okay. Very good. A lot going on here on the El Paso Vista Radio Show. We shall take a break. And uh, 544? 5876 or 915-544-KTSM. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan, near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. I had a lady that was in her mid-70s, and I'd sold her timeshare, and that was the lowest I'd ever felt in my life. I knew then that I had to do something to simply not to go to hell for selling timeshare. Chuck McDowell founded Wesley Financial Group to help folks cancel their timeshares permanently. I called her and everybody that I'd sold timeshare to, and I said, this is what I said to you that was a lie, and this is what you need to do to cancel your timeshare. From that point, People started referring friends to me to help them cancel the timeshare, and that's how it all started. I fought the world's largest timeshare company in federal court. If I had lost that lawsuit, there would be no one helping people that have been lied to when they bought timeshare. I guarantee if we take you as a client, we will cancel your timeshare contract or you'll pay nothing. Call Wesley Financial Group now for a free information kit. 800-990-3434. That's 800-990-3434. 800 990 3434. If you love trivia, if you love the hugely popular Stuff You Should Know podcast, then the Trivial Pursuit game, Stuff You Should Know Edition, is for you. With 600 questions, weird and unbelievable trivia in categories like myths, legends, and conspiracies. SYSK selects a mix of topics handpicked by podcast hosts Josh and Chuck. Give the gift of trivia this holiday. Find Trivial Pursuit, the Stuff You Should Know Edition, at your favorite retailer or wherever you shop for board games. Hey, El Paso, Ivan Ochoa, General Manager from Sunland Park Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and Fiat. I love the holidays. It's a time to be thankful for life and all its blessings. I'm thankful for you, our customers, and your families. As a gesture of gratitude, we're offering 0%, zero down on select new vehicles and no payments till February 2022. The Big Finish Sales event starts now at Sunland Park Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram Fiat. For a limited time, get zero APR for 84 months, zero down, and make no payments till February 2022. Upside down in your trade? We want it. Even if you owe up to $10,000 more than your car is worth. Plus, save thousands at the all-new Southern Park Dodge Certified Pre-Owned Supercenter. On every vehicle in stock with more arriving daily. All military personnel and all first responders receive an additional discount. Thank you for your service. Southern Park Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Fiat, or buy the car. It's fun. At I-10 at Southern Park Drive or online at SouthernParkDodge.com. Estamos en tu esquina el paso. El paso strong. Includes factory rebate dealer discount plus TKL. Zero APR is 1190 per thousand finance. Obsolete vehicles with approved credit. Offers not Puerto combined. Rico is the new go-to destination for investment opportunities, and Impeller is the new online tool that connects investors with innovative projects seeking capital on the island. Impeller takes the guesswork out of investing in Puerto Rico, surfacing the insights you need to make informed decisions and empower your investment portfolio. Visit investpr.org slash Impeller and set up your account today to see what the island has to offer. Impeller, your hub for investment opportunities in Puerto Rico. Powered by Invest Puerto Rico. 
I'm Larry Gelwitz, the getaway guru. Join me on The Travel Show every Sunday evening at 7 p.m. We talk all things travel, favorite places, how to travel more and pay less, secret hideaways, discount airline tickets and cruises, and the best travel deals on the planet. It's The Travel Show every Sunday evening, 7 p.m., right here on News Radio 690 KTSM. And I'll tell you where to go and how to get there. The pandemic is forging important changes across health and science. On Breakthrough, a new series from the Prognosis podcast, we look at the medical mysteries and the opportunities COVID is leaving in its wake, from a new condition doctors are trying to understand and treat, to how mRNA technology promises to revolutionise the fight against diseases like cancer and multiple sclerosis. Listen to Prognosis Breakthrough on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. El Paso's News Radio, 690 KTSM. And now let's turn back the pages of time and return to the El Paso History Show. Brought to you by Patrick Tuttle, Coldwell Banker Heritage Real Estate, 915-585-7777. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant, 6761 Donovan Drive. By Monterey Asset Management. By Mission Del Rey, 1421 Lee Trevino with El Paso souvenirs and gift shopping. By Keystone Heritage Park on Donovan Drive, 915-584-0563. Here again, El Paso History with Melissa Sargent and Jackson Polk. A quick reminder about people who uh, promote El Paso, the celebration of our mountains. Uh, They've got a trip to the War Eagles Air Museum on December 16th. That's going to cap off their 2022 events. Celebrationofourmountains.org. And you've got something else over there. Yes, Pepe's Restaurant in Canyon T is open today for in-house dining, and they're located at 6761 Donovan Drive. And you can call Pepe's at 915-877-2152 and have them cater your holiday parties or have them ship the taste of El Paso to friends and family. (laughs) Now, you can also even give Pepe's gift certificates as gifts, which a lot of people do. I've done that. It's a great little item to give people. But Pepe's will, we want to let everybody know, Pepe's will be closed for the holidays starting December 24th through January 4th. And so get in there now and get your Mexican fix for the holidays. As of now, I'm planning to go out there and get some yeah, Mexican we're, food. We're going for a short time today. That'll be excellent out there. All right. We've got uh, the crowd here in the uh, in the studio still here. Hal, Veronica, and Jim, they got books about stuff. But we also got a guy on the phone here who is an interesting fellow all by himself. Craig from uh, Mission Del Rey Southwest. How are you, sir? Hey, Jackson. Great. Good to hear you. Hello, everybody. Hi, How's it Craig. going today? We're doing good. Welcome in on uh, on the phone here from Mission Del Rey. Now, you, I ask you to call in because you have got some uh, El Paso gifts, but you got a whole store full of gifts. And I thought, well, we'll just uh, take a listen to you and uh, tell us what you got. Yeah, we've got, well, you know, our specialty is El Paso souvenirs and gifts. So the whole store really is full of great opportunities to find things for friends and family. And this year, it seems like especially people are really enjoying the store just because, you know, with the supply chain thing and a lot of our artists are just now getting back to work, a lot of the products have just come in. So the store is just bursting at the seams with stuff. So it's just, uh, by the way, I wanted to tell you before I forget, I've got a special deal here for all of the listeners, 20% off exclusively for radio listeners here in the store. They just got to tell us that they heard about us on the radio. Or if they're shopping online, just use a coupon El Paso Gifts when they check out. And they can have that same 20% off. Um, let me tell you a few things real quick. Um, you know, one of the things everybody seems to like this year is Talavera pottery. That's that beautiful hand-painted uh, pottery from southern Mexico. And we have it in poinsettia themes with red, white, and green, perfect for Christmas. We've also got all the traditional stuff. Uh, something I like this year that we have that's new is, is a, a handmade stained glass jewelry uh, jewelry um, box, different sizes, different colors, handmade, hand soldered, just like a stained glass window, but a little jewelry box. Oh, that's and they're neat. not that expensive. Nice. They're really nice. And then, of course, we've got all the sterling silver, Native American jewelry. Uh, a couple of the girls that work in the store said to mention that we have all the uh, cold weather stuff. Sweater, shawls, ponchos, oh, that's right. that beautiful soft alpaca stuff, and leather purses, uh, travel bags, 
And then, you know, the regular stuff we have all the time, metal art, Native American wall decor. Uh, we've got new artisan soaps and candles just came in this year. Hand-woven rugs, table runners, placemats, and beautiful soft plush blankets, and and how do we so find much more. how do we find your store? You have a brand new sh- showroom, fairly brand new, since the COVID madness uh, hit us. And uh, how do we find you to go there? The best way to do it is to get to the corner of Lee Trevino and Pelicano. And if people are familiar with the restaurant there on the corner, Icocula, you just go just beyond that to the west on Pelicano and turn in off of Pelicano. And you can and see the signs. You can there. see the signs there from uh, from the str- from uh, Pelicano. It, it actually has right. an address exactly. on Lee Trevino, but that's misleading because uh, it's a whole warehouse kind of uh, showroom place. And uh, also, by, right now, we're showing up some of your uh, some of those fancy stools that you've got bar stools. You got a bunch of amazing oh, yeah. stuff in there. Those are a lot of fun. Well, <laughs> you know, yeah. we actually set a record last uh, week on Friday good for, our, um, for the Black Friday. We had more people in the store than ever before. And then we broke the record the next day on Saturday. So it's been a lot of fun. And people seem to be really enjoying the atmosphere. Well, Craig, thank you for ringing up Mission Del Rey Southwest. We appreciate you as a sponsor and also what you do for El Paso. Have a Merry Christmas. It's our pleasure. And we appreciate what you guys do. We're so happy to be a part of it. And have a great and Merry Christmas, everyone. Thanks a lot, Craig. You You take it easy. Appreciate that. Bye-bye. All right, we're going to take a break here on the El Paso History Radio Show a little early and and maybe start off with Hal, because, Hal, you got too many things mm-hmm. to talk about over here. And we'll do a couple of them, and we'll move around here and keep going. Uh, but it's the El Paso Mr. Radio Show, and on Facebook, you can find us there. And also streaming live on Remember in El Paso When. Fair enough? That sounds good to me. All right, be back in just a moment. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate, call Certified Property Manager Ray Baca, 915-592-4549. 592-4549. What's all the buzz about nasal irrigation and navage, navage, navage? And should I try it? Here's the science. Airborne germs invade through your nose. It's the body's air filter for trapping allergens and viruses. When your nose gets clogged, it's less effective and germs multiply. Eventually, your immune system can get overwhelmed and you get sick. Nasal irrigation is an effective, all-natural way to clean your nose. It's not a drug. It's more like plumbing. Saline goes in one nostril, around the back of the nose, and out the other nostril, flushing out mucus and germs. I'm Martin Hoke, and I invented Navage to make cleaning your nose easy. It's the world's only nose cleaner with powered suction. Navage pulls out the bad stuff so you can breathe better, sleep deeper, snore less, and feel healthier. At Walgreens, CDS, Rite Aid, Target, Bed Bath, and Walmart. Or go to Navage.com for a free gift with purchase. Over 2 million sold. Navage, N-A-V-A-G-E. Clean nose, healthy life. Are you ready for a career with a company dedicated to crafting dairy products loved by families around the world? Saputo Cheese in Las Cruces, New Mexico on Crawford Boulevard is hiring for manufacturing and maintenance positions and are inviting you to their job fair on December 8th and 9th from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Positions start at $15 an hour. You can also apply right now at saputo.com slash careers. Join a company that cares about your community. Come to the career fair on December 8th and 9th, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. in Las Cruces, New Mexico on Crawford Boulevard. Compassion International has a network of over 300 church partners in Haiti, poised to bring critical relief to those suffering because of the recent earthquake. Make your $40 one-time gift now by texting the keyword radio to 97646. To protect his home and family from disaster, Steve used courage, wisdom, and his camera phone. That should do it. Way to go, Steve! By simply taking digital pictures of his family's important documents, Steve can always have them stored safely online, no matter when disaster strikes. Learn other simple ways to protect your home and family before a natural disaster at ready.gov. That's ready.gov. A message from FEMA and the Ad Council. Weather and traffic info. You need it. We have it. Traffic and weather all day. Stay informed. News Radio 690 KTSM. News Radio 690 KTSM.
And now let's turn back the pages of time and return to the El Paso History Show. Brought to you by Patrick Tuttle, Coldwell Banker Heritage Real Estate, 915-585-7777. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant, 6761 Donovan Drive. By Monterey Asset Management. By Mission Del Rey, 1421 Lee Trevino with El Paso souvenirs and gift shopping. By Keystone Heritage Park on Donovan Drive, 915-584-0563. Here again, El Paso History with Melissa Sargent and Jackson Polk. A couple of reminders about history things here. Rick Kern's doing history on podcast, Talk and Rock Radio, talkandrockradio.com. Also, visit the El Paso Museum of History. They have El Paso's Homegrown, a new exhibit, World War II, now through August 2022. It's on the second floor, El Paso's Homegrown, World War II. It's a new exhibit that explores the impact of World War II on the borderland through a com combination of our collection and community contributions. It uh, covers Company E, the European Pacific Theaters of War, Bracera Program, home efforts of women in, uh, in, uh, during the war, and the contributions of indigenous tribes, Japanese internment, and Tom Lee's work as a war correspondent. A lot of going on there. I want everybody to know it's time to take a hike in the Franklin Mountain State Park. You know, they've got some great hikes coming up, and the first one coming up will be Sunday, December 12th at 8.30 a.m., and they're going to hike the North Peak Hike. And you meet at West, uh, West Cottonwood, oh, at, at the West Cottonwood Trailhead. It's a strenuous, di difficult hike, and it's eight miles long. But definitely get out there. The weather's perfect for doing this kind of thing in the Franklin Mountains. And Diana Moy is the park interpreter and uh, volunteer coordinator up there. And you can give her a call at 915-440-9100. And you can get in touch with her about all this hike and all the other hikes coming up. I actually did that hike when I was younger. Yeah. Oh my God! Don't try it now. <laughs> but I mean, I that is it, it's that's a not the thousand steps, is it? No, no, no. That's the uh, down by Ranger Peak. Oh, okay. This is the North Mount Franklin. Oh my God! I didn't know I couldn't do it until I didn't do it, yeah. but I did plus, it. Plus, your altitude is is much higher up you, there. You so gain three thousand feet straight up. Yeah. And all of a sudden, like wow! And so you don't realize uh, how much it'll affect you. Yeah. Oh, it really will affect you here. All right, Hal Marcus is is one of the authors in here, and you've illustrated the book. Uh, called what's it called? Well, it's called Muchas Gracias Maria, and uh, I have to back up a little bit because it was started with this one right here called Buenas Noches El Paso. Uh, my good friend uh, Luke Lowenfield uh, wrote a poem for his little boys, and he brought it to the gallery. I didn't know Luke at that time, and he read me this poem, and I just love the title um, Buenas Noches El Paso. Uh, we went to Judd Burgess, uh, who designed the book, and uh, a year later we came out at the Christmas Fair for the Junior League, and we sold about 1,200 copies, and people were asking us, what's next? And so a year later we came out with this book, which is Muchas Gracias Maria, and it's the same story, the same little boy, but it honors the Latina women in our community, and uh, the little boy goes across the river, uh, show them this uh, picture here. I love this picture because yeah, that's, that's picture. the bridge like uh, that happens only one place in the world, and that's just about two miles from where we are today. And it has the immigrants coming through. It has this beautiful fire truck with a piñata uh, in the back of it. And the little boy meets his grandma in Juarez, and they have this problem because the piñata is so big, they need to borrow a fire truck from the neighbor. And then they come back to Madeline Park. It takes place in Kern Place. It has, uh, anyway, it's just a really fun, fun book. It all takes place in El Paso. Uh, and then we came out with another book after that, which was the Animal Alphabet Album by Aunt Alice Alligator. Oh, yeah. And Alice. And that was uh, published in 1995 uh, in paperback, and but now it's in a hardback. So we have three uh, books, and if you buy two, you get one free uh, at the gallery. We're, we're at 1308 North Oregon. And, of course, everything we've done since we opened the doors in 1995 has been local. Incidentally, that was the time that I met Melissa when we saved Keystone. Yeah, and then later on, Jackson hey, that, Polk, took, that took some effort. Then it, <laughs> later on, Jackson Polk came on board, and we formed a nonprofit, and uh, you know, and the rest is history. Uh, but well, my, take, take a moment on that history, if yeah. you would, because you did some interesting artwork. I don't think we have that picture from Keystone. Not but, really. But you like, drew a sort of like iconic picture right. of it the, the wetland standing in a wetland you know with a spear and all the birds were around it and uh basically that helped save the keystone from becoming an industrial park 
shopping mm-hmm. center or whatever, whatever else they're going to try to build usually there, yeah. happens on Donovan. So I'm real proud of our work together. And here we are working again today oh, yeah. to, to preserve the history of El Paso here with Veronica and James. Uh, but our gallery has been dedicated to the arts of El Paso for 25 years. We celebrated our, our 25th anniversary uh, last April. And uh, my wife and I are still at it every day. We have represented probably 600 different local artists from both sides of the border. And this week, uh, Mauricio Mora is having his opening uh, on December 9th, a Thursday. It's called Mora Returns. Because of COVID, we've been only open by appointment for two years. And now we're open on Tuesdays and Thursdays and by appointment. And uh, so it's been very interesting working with artists for the past 25 years. And you have your own artwork in there. Oh, I have lots of my own artwork. Uh, believe me, we have prints, we have cards, we have books, we have CDs. We have some of James's books. Some of Veronica's books are available at my gallery. So, I mean, we're all about El Paso. We always have been. People come and they say, you know, I have a Salvador Dali or, or this and that. I said, you know, we only do El Paso. Sorry. Um, so we're, really? we're dedicated. You turn those down? We turn them down. We only do El Paso stuff. And uh, we've been really proud about that because there's how many art galleries are there in El Paso? Maybe a handful. Santa Fe has 250 of them and there's only like 75,000 people who live in Santa Fe. So, you know, we're committed to being, you know, all about El Paso every single day. And I was born and raised here and uh, I'm not going anywhere. In fact, I just bought the house next door to mine and, and, yeah, and my daughter's moving back into town. We're going to be um, having, you know, events there as well. So, and the, and the streetcar goes right in front of my house. Uh, so we are El Paso. And, We've and right been. by the shop. Right, right by the shop, yeah. right by the house. It's the whole deal. It's the, it's the entrance to El Paso. So we're honored to be on the program today with James and Veronica and Jackson and Melissa. And uh, if you don't know your history, you don't have a future. Well, I, we, we harp on that all the time about how El Paso needs to know its history, its heritage. And I, I I'm sad that not too many people were picking up on that. Well, I mean, little by little, little by little, we just have to keep preaching every day. And, and uh, we have the only selection of early El Paso art in the whole city that you can purchase. We probably have uh, 50 different artists who have dead, are dead and gone, lived in El Paso. We preserve their legacy. We do publish. We have exhibits. <laughs> Jose Cisneros, Tom Lee, Manuel yeah. Acosta, Eugene Thurston. Uh, Rudy Montoya, all of them Amazing we have artists, in our yeah. gallery. It's like a museum that you can actually go in and buy stuff. That's we'll, the best way to say it, I think. We'll, right, come, yeah. we'll come back in, a, in, a, in, a, in the next hour and talk to you more about some of the things you have. Thank you. Right now, we have a caller coming in here. Uh, let's see what we got here. Raul from Northeast. What's up, Raul? Hey, how are you guys doing? Doing fine. I want to wish everybody uh, the happiest of holidays. And I'd uh, also like to say hi to my friends, Veronica and Hal. Hi, guys. Hola. Hola. Uh, hi, I wish Veronica was our mayor. She's awesome. And so is my friend Hal, <laughs> one of El Paso's best-known artists. Uh, El Paso is blessed to have them. Uh, like all of us here, we love El Paso, and we appreciate our Mexican neighbors. And I, and I didn't catch your show from the beginning, guys, but I tuned in as a woman was talking about a Sarco's pollution. And I, along with my fellow environmental activists, got very involved in trying to keep a Sarco from getting its license to uh uh, operate you know, uh, uh, new. Uh, we lost that fight, but uh, thank goodness they uh, decided to close their plan. They had their own anyway, trouble with the price of copper, apparently. You know what? Yeah. Simply, I, I studied. Anyway, uh, hang on one second. I studied the Sarco uh, as we toured the place after it closed and figured out what they were doing. They had their own weather station, and they would release that stuff up that stack. And they they shot it so high, most of it actually left the county. Uh, a lot of it uh, came down. But what the reason they closed? The, uh, the lower area of Smeltertown was not something that came out of the stack. There was a leak in a kerosene tank for over a decade, and that's what polluted that lower part of uh, uh, the, Rio Grande. the Smeltertown. And people don't realize that's what happened. Yeah. And uh, there's, yeah, a lot, well, there's a lot more to yeah, talk about that. Pollution is pollution. Uh, anyway, a couple of weeks ago, while driving south on Freeway 54 in the afternoon, my wife and I noticed a huge flame and plumes of smoke coming from the flaring tower at the refinery. Uh, as it was, uh, you know, the air was already dirty, looking dirty that day, and it looks, it usually looks even dirtier south of the border. You know, at the end of January 2020, El Paso was ranked as number four in comparison with other midnight, mid-sized cities in terms of pollution. In 19 
place out of 300 in the United States with poor air quality. In a border city like El Paso with 683,000 people and another 2.5 million people living in Juarez does not need an oil refinery in the middle of over 3 million people. All right, I'm going to cut you off right there, Raul, because we got to move on to other things that we're doing here. But do thank you for your call. Good to talk to you again. And uh, you're right about a lot of that stuff. We're going to go back to gifts about El Paso. How about that? That's what we're going to do. So, I, And we got about a half a minute here left. Uh, anybody got reports on social media coming on, either you or uh, uh, Andrew? Any, either um, one of them? Popping along here, bouncing back and forth. Oh. Andrew J. Yeah, we got people chiming in uh, from the comment earlier about the uh, hanging in the trees. Oh, Cindy yeah. Milazzo saying, uh, Pancho Villa hung many Mexicans. There are local accounts of this from families who fled Mexico after seeing their fathers or husbands hung. But uh, on a more positive note, Jimmy uh, Koppenberger, among others, saying uh, thank you again for always making Saturday a great day. So appreciation going on out there. As well as uh, just had uh, Rose Rodriguez uh, uh, comment good morning with us. Well, I appreciate what they're doing out there. You know, one thing you were talking about is the fact that it seems trying to get people involved in history. And a lot of times you'll find people don't recognize that they're losing their history or about their history until they're older. El Paso is a fairly young community. It's the I think demographics is what, below 35 or 45 the more we get people getting older, I think you'll start seeing more activity. Hopefully, there'll be a lot left for them to take care of. We're going to come back after the news with our authors in-house here. We've got some more people going to call in. And thank you guys for coming in here. It's thank an interesting day to, to do this on a Saturday morning. And thank you to Andrew in the control room. We'll explain to you a little bit later who you are. We know who you are. Who is it? <laughs> See you after the news. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the El Paso History Show. There's another hour to go, so please stay tuned. This hour is brought to you by Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant, home of the one and only Margarita. By Patrick Tuttle, Coldwell Banker Heritage Real Estate, 915-585-7777. By Keystone Heritage Park on Donovan Drive, 915-584-0563. By Monterey Asset Management. By Mission Del Rey, 1421 Lee Trevino with El Paso souvenirs and gift shopping. We'll be right back after the news, right here on News Radio 690, KTSM, El Paso. There's stuff that your mom never told you. So join hosts Annie Reese and Samantha McVeigh of the podcast appropriately named Stuff Mom Never Told You. Each weekday, they discuss topics such as politics, history, and pop culture, all examined from an intersectional feminist lens. In our society, we do pressure people, especially women, to forgive. Since we've both gone through trauma, I just was so torn by it. I'm like, what if I can't forgive? Listen to the Stuff Mom Never Told You podcast on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, El Paso, Ivan Ochoa, general manager from Sunland Park, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, and Fiat. I love the holidays. It's a time to be thankful for life and all its blessings. I'm thankful for you, our customers, and your families. As a gesture of gratitude, we're offering 0%, zero down on select new vehicles and no payments till February 2022. The big finish sales event starts now at Sunland Park, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Fiat. For a limited time, get zero APR for 84 months, zero down, and make no payments till February 2022. Upside down in your trade we want it even if you owe up to ten thousand dollars more than your car is worth plus save thousands at the all-new Sunland Park Dodge certified pre-owned super center on every vehicle in stock with more arriving daily all military personnel and all first responders receive an additional discount thank you for your service Sunland Park Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram Fiat or buy the car is fun at I-10 at Sunland Park Drive or online at SunlandParkDodge.com Estamos en tu esquina El Paso El Paso Strong includes factory retail dealer discount plus detail out zero APR is 11 per thousand finance on select vehicles with approved credit offers not combined Join Brian Birds of the Brian Birds Home Selling Team every Sunday morning at 7.30 a.m. for real estate tips with Brian. The best in El Paso when it comes to selling. Brian is an expert in real estate. Listen every Sunday from 7.30 a.m. to 8 a.m. on KTSM AM 690 for tips on buying or selling your home. Info on what's going on in the market today and much, much more. Real Estate Tips with Brian every Sunday morning at 7.30 on KTSM AM 690. 
ABC News Radio. I'm Julie Ryan. The parents of the accused Michigan school shooter are pleading not guilty to all four counts of involuntary manslaughter filed against them. Brad Siegel has the update. James and Jennifer Crumley were arraigned in a Pontiac courtroom Saturday morning, just hours after being taken into custody in Detroit. A judge set bond at a half a million dollars cash each after prosecutors argued the pair remain a flight risk. Police say the Crumleys bought the gun their 15-year-old son Ethan used to kill four classmates and wound seven others in the mass shooting earlier this week at Oxford High School in suburban Detroit. I'm Brad Siegel. The suspect in a Colorado mass shooting last March has been found incompetent to stand trial. Ahmad Elisa is accused of killing 10 people at a King Supers grocery store in Boulder. Boulder County District Attorney Michael Doherty says Elisa is being sent to the Colorado State Hospital for treatment. Doherty says it's unlikely the 22-year-old Elisa is faking a mental illness for his defense and believes he can stand trial given enough time. Cops are looking for a gunman after two men were shot on a subway train early Saturday in Manhattan. Paul DeCastro reports. It was around 12.30 a.m. when the two victims got into an argument with another man on the platform at the 125th Street Station near Lexington Avenue in Harlem. Police say all three men got on the southbound 4 train when it arrived. Shortly after, the suspect opened fire and struck a 21-year-old man in the arm and wounded a 22-year-old man in the stomach. Both were taken to Harlem Hospital and are expected to survive. The suspect got off at the next station and remains at large. The Rolling Stones had the biggest tour of 2021. Billboard has released its year-end box office chart and says the Rolling Stones' no-filter tour was the year's biggest moneymaker, raking in over $72 million. Green Day came in second and Harry Styles came in third. You're listening to the latest on NBC News Radio. Our weather pattern will remain unsettled as clouds will be on the increase and rain prospects will be on the rise. We'll time out our next round of rain, plus the return of warmer temperatures. From the KFOX 14 Severe Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Kira Miner. Beautiful, top-quality, long-lasting dental implants, as low as $19.95 at 1995implants.com. The El Paso Dental Office, where implants are affordable. Other places charge three, four, five, up to $6,000 per tooth. Please do not pay that much. Please do come to 1995implants.com, where our price is much lower, as low as $1,995 per tooth, including the implant, abutment, and crown, which many other places charge extra for. Plus, at 1995implants.com, we also offer a free consultation, free standard x-rays, and very convenient payment options. Now's the time to get rid of your cracked teeth, missing teeth, or loose, old, wobbly dentures and get the beautiful new smile that you want at a very affordable price. 1995implants.com For more information, see our website, 1995implants.com. That's 1995implants.com. Drowning in IRS debt? If you can't afford to pay your IRS debt due to economic hardship, you can now be free of IRS collection efforts by taking advantage of a special IRS tax hardship program. This program allows Americans who owe the IRS to resolve their delinquent tax debt once and for all. In some cases, maybe even reducing what you owe significantly. An open phone line has been established by Community Tax for consumers to call and see if they qualify. Simply dial 800-798-1335. If you owe back taxes to the IRS and cannot afford to pay them back or have years of unfiled tax returns, help is standing by. Just call the Community Tax Helpline today at 800-798-1335 for the help that you need. Don't take on the IRS alone. They can attack your wages, savings, pension, home, and even your social security check. Call 800-798-1335 to see if you qualify. That's 800-798-1335. Stay tuned and stay informed with News Radio 690, KTSM, and iHeartRadio Station. If you're a single man under the age of 35, you'd probably like to know what the ladies are looking for on an online dating site. A guy who had a few drinks and later got pulled over for buzz driving. See, that could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And doesn't a guy who's back living with his parents but calls them my roommates just scream Mr. Right? Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. News Radio 690 KTSM El Paso.
News Radio 690 KTSM presents the second hour of the El Paso History Show with documentary filmmaker Jackson Polk and historian Melissa Sargent. Streaming live at KTSMRadio.com. Brought to you by Patrick Tuttle, Coldwell Banker Heritage Real Estate, 915-585-7777. By Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant, home of the one and only Margarita. By Keystone Heritage Park on Donovan Drive, 915-584-0563. By Monterey Asset Management. By Mission Del Rey, 1421 Lee Trevino, with El Paso souvenirs and gift shopping. And now, El Paso History with Melissa Sargent and Jackson Polk. And we start Hour 2 of the El Paso History Show with El Paso History Moment by Melissa Sargent. And it's uh, for the History Alliance page. And today her story is about the 1846 Battle of Brasito, just north of El Paso. Battle of Brasitos. December 25th, 1846. Colonel Alexander Donovan and 500 soldiers confronted 1,200 Mexican dragoons camped at Brasito, near Vado, New Mexico. The exhausted and demoralized Mexicans had stopped to rest and celebrate Christmas, but their celebration was cut short. When Mexican sentries, seeing large dust clouds, assumed Donovan cavalry reinforcements were coming from the north to join him, when in reality it was a large herd of sheep and wagons following behind Donovan's troops. Mexicans so intimidated by the thought of more soldiers that the battle lasted only 30 minutes, and Mexican survivors fled back to Chihuahua, barely stopping long enough in El Paso del Norte for provisions. More history next week on El Paso History Moments. I'm Melissa Sargent for the El Paso History Alliance. Yeah, Merry Christmas, Donovan. <laughs> Jeez. And that was really interesting what they did with that, is that apparently that had been used in some other battles in the past, but that he himself for that this area used that with the animals and it made the dust and they just assumed and they were the forces were less uh than the mexican forces but they had well, they had better weapons yeah and better better well, shooters no yes and no i mean the mexicans had a howitzer they had their they had bows uh, and arrows too no they they had the, the 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 lancer guard which was a very high efficiency working uh, mexican troops uh, you do but this, i think they were just so exhausted and so worn out by having run come back from the south that it was just too much you had the uh, this is for the history alliance that's a big uh, yes, a big thing is. There. yeah they're a great group of people over there and and it's you know you want to get involved and learn more about the history of el paso then you can go to places like the el paso history alliance facebook page where you can join the group of historians who, and others who promote the architecture and his architectural history and culture of el paso and it's managed by max grossman and mark stone and remember in El Paso when, which is really the premier when it comes to, you know, history and pay, pictures. The and pictures. Oh, oh Amazing. Yeah. With thousands of pictures and stories and much more. And it's managed by Barbara Given Bainey and her team of volunteer editors for the page. Interesting stuff there. And Barbara is the chief admin, administrators, Mar Margaret Smith, Rick Duncan, Ken Weiss, Craig Hayes, Rick Nata, Isaac Williams. All right. We got this crowd of authors in here. We're going to have to get back to them in a minute. But we also have a guy on the phone who I asked to call in. Take about 90 seconds, if you would. Good morning, Ruben Gomez. Hey, good morning, Jackson. Good morning. Tell us in about a minute and a half who you are and what you have. So I'm Ruben. Um, I'm the owner of El Paso's Finest. We actually have basically everything that's made locally here in shop. So we don't have anything that's made, that's, re that's bought and resold. Everything from our soaps to candle to artwork is completely made here in El Paso by local artists. And that's a bit unusual of a, of a shop there. Where are you? Uh, I'm located at 314th North Mesa, right across San Jacinto Plaza in the historical Cortez building. Are you on a lower floor? Or where are you? Yeah, I'm right at the main entrance. I'm right next door to it. Uh, basically, right outside my window is the Lagartos. Oh, there you are. <laughs> So historic downtown, and you're in there with some uh, interesting souvenirs and El Paso things. Yeah, absolutely. We have original artwork, and then all the artwork that's actually hanging on our walls is completely for sale right now because we're getting ready for the new year. We bring in all the new artwork from the artists that are working on right now. So right now we're moving all the artwork that we have out. So right now is the best time to buy Anything really, if you all always wanted to decorate your office or home with the local artwork, now's the best time to get it. Yeah, we thought December 4th would be a good time to bring this kind of stuff up, and so here we are. Well, Ruben, thanks a lot. Again, your location is, what, what's the address? It is 314th North Mesa, right across San Jacinto Plaza. And your shop, epfinest.com. Yeah, shopepfinest.com, and you could also order online. 
All right. Thanks for ringing. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. All right. You take it easy. Interesting stuff all over El Paso. We're not going to cover everything in El Paso, but we're doing our best to cover some of it. Hal, give me two more books and we'll talk to uh, to Veronica. Okay. So I have this book here, which I don't know if you can see on the camera. It's called uh, How Markets Art and Times. You want to show it to him? Yeah, it's a it's about a three hundred and fifty page book. That's a heavy book. Yeah, and uh, it's all my artwork from uh, when I was fifteen years old up until uh, twenty sixteen, uh, and so we self published these. We published cards, posters, prints, and books. The other one I wanted to plug a little bit is this one by uh, Rosa Guerrero. Oh yeah, you know, and it's called Las Posadas. I picked this up the other day at the women's club. They had a book fair and uh, James Murphy was there as well. And it's a delightful book and it's uh, uh, also available and it has recipes for tamales, has, has photography by Joel Solcito in it. And there's poetry. And of course, Rosa is just an iconic, beautiful woman in El Paso, very positive. Um, so this is a book called uh, Las Posadas by uh, Rosa Guerrero. So, you know, come on by and make an appointment. Give us a call. We're open Tuesdays and Thursdays at 1308 North Oregon. We're celebrating our 25th anniversary. Uh, and uh, we're just really happy to be here with Jackson and Melissa. We've been, in fact, Jackson did a documentary on me, Al Marcos 2001. Yeah. Oh, my, yes. That was, <laughs> that was more fun than you know. We won awards. It was on public television. And uh, we got to know each other real well. Oh, yeah. That was a heck of an experience. We're talking with Helen. <laughs> Every bit of his life and his kids and all your children. Right. And I always call him. I say, hey, this is Mihal. So to this day, whenever we write each other, we say, hi, this is Mihal. Mihal is here. Mihal. Yeah. Yeah. M-E-H-A-L, Mihal. Well, you're an interesting icon under yourself. I, I sort of consider you the Picasso of El Paso. Oh, well, is that a good thing to say? Well, that's a compliment. I like ah. Picasso. Okay, I you know, but Picasso. I mean, your stuff is there and it's uh, it's out there at the well, same time. You know, when you do something for like 60 years straight, it's like an overnight success. It just takes 60 years. Oh, my. <laughs> well, I, I, I think a lot of homes in El Paso and beyond have some of your work. Uh, they do. There's oh, no yeah. doubt about they that. They do. We've I, got I paint every day. I'm I'm blessed and, and I'm fortunate and I love my community. And I was born and raised here. My, my parents came here from Syria in 1921. And so I'm Jewish. I'm Arabic and... My, my grandfather bought a little horse and buggy in Segundo Barrio, and we um, and they learned Spanish before they learned English. And so, Interesting. very fortunate. And then the other voice there was Jim Murphy, and you've got your book again. Uh, we're going to get to Veronica in a minute, but mm. t- t- show us another couple of pictures if you can. Uh, maybe uh, hand the book over, I'll do it. Well, this, this picture in particular, I thought, uh, El Paso High School, when I saw the picture of the auditorium inside... Uh, it's on the bottom. It's the bottom photo. That that's just the most spectacular auditorium I've ever seen Isn't in a high incredible? school. Yeah. And, and when I, you know, I, that had to be included in my book. It was like that. I've never seen an auditorium like that before. So that's just a little bit more about. It's more like a theater in the sense that you were oh, actually like a plaza, like a plaza theater or one of the old, that's you know, movie theaters. And, and who such. and who was it who designed that building? Trust. And we trust. Uh-huh. Absolutely. Tr- so trust so that, brothers, that, yeah. that that theater is part of his his work as well. Well, my little plug would be for my website, jamesrabbitmurphy.com, if I could do that. And, and I also sure. have the South Franklin Trinity here that was an, is an adventure novel that I wrote. Yeah. But my latest book is Poetry from a Road Scholar. Ah. It's got 86 uh, of my uh, works in there. And I, I, if I have a minute, I'll just tell you how I came up with that name. It's Road Scholar, right? So when I was hitchhiking around the country when I was a young man, I was living in Boulder, Colorado. And I had heard that Chris Christopherson was a road scholar. So oh, to yeah. me, I was like 21, 22 years old. I'm thinking, Chris Christopherson and I have something in common. We're both out there on the road, on the road, learning what we've learned together. And then you saw it in print. And then a couple years <laughs> later, <laughs> I saw that he was a Rhodes Scholar. Well, they hate, they hate like, what the heck is they, that? They forget that S on the end. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I, I threw that in there as my little title. And, and, I like oh, it though. I think it's perfect. I think it fits you perfectly. <laughs> and uh, and your book is available again on your website. On my website. Mm-hmm. And that is jamesrobertmurphy.com. He, he's got some very unique stories. I, I hope mean, you it, sell it, a million it, of yeah, them. I, yeah, me too. It kind of goes all over. You kind of go all over. It's not just one genre. You kind of all sure. over the place, which is really cool. I appreciate it. And your, your history is that you came from uh, upstate New York. Came from Syracuse, New York Syracuse. in 2004. We moved here, but I married a gal from here in 1986. Ah. We were doing Chelsea Street Pub, if you remember that. Mm-hmm. I was in the first band that ever played at Chelsea oh, Street geez. Pub. Oh. 
And so I met my wife there, my future wife, and we got married in 1986 and uh, moved up to Syracuse for 18 years. And in 2004, we came here. So here you are. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm glad you're here. Finally got tired That's of the it. snow, didn't you? Oh, boy, I wouldn't go back there. <laughs> uh, Veronica Carbajal is here. And your book, if, we're going to have to take a break in the middle of your conversation, but do what you can to explain what you've got there. Yes, um, absolutely. So this book was illustrated by Silali Trevino, who's from Juarez, and I wrote it. A, um, I guess that it's bilingual. Thank you, Hal. You're awesome. Thank you. Judd Burgess also designed this book. It's self-published. And the book, like all of the work that I've, I've done my entire life, is really meant to dispel a lot of stereotypes about Mexicans and Mexican culture. Um, I am, you know, I, so many times I'll hear things like, oh, that's a Mexican thing, right? Um, some of you know I've been uh, part of a team that's been working to save a, a pack of dogs that have been multiplying at Duranguito. And we just saved our last puppy this week. Um, and one of the um, animal services officers said to me, well, you know, all these dogs, it, all the problems we have with the strays in the city are because um, people across the river don't value animals. And I was like, I just started yelling at him and I said, no, it's because our city manager doesn't value animals and he's on this side of the river. Oh, yeah. And so we, you know, so the book isn't really about that. It's about the fact that my grandparents were born in the 1920s and they taught me uh, to love animals. Um, they taught me to love being a woman. They believe that women should be educated. Domestic violence was not tolerated in our home. Um, I was, you know, we talked about abortion, about LGBTQ rights you know, in the 80s. And these are folks that were born in the 1920s and their parents had been born at the turn of the century and had very similar beliefs. And I think in part it was because we were not raised religious. So the Catholic Church was really not an influence in our household. You were not we raised. We were not. And I think that that was very liberating for my great grandparents as well as my- Were they Catholic? They were Catholic. We practiced at home, but we did not go to church. And, um, and so my grandparents knew the Bible um, they knew Jesus. I knew Jesus, but we did not, um, you know, because the church until very recently has been a, a tool of oppression and has really been used to colonize our people. And so, um, but going wow. back to, to these comments about, you know, um, it's a Mexican thing. It's like, no, really, it's not, you know. And uh, and so what I find really um, beautiful about this particular moment here is that, you know, I met Sal um, Mihal about. Um, I think it was in 1998 after I came back from Brown and uh, I went to Brown University, graduated in 1998, and I got to interview Hal and, and I just loved his work because it, it showed so much love and pride for our Mexican culture and our colors. And and um, and so I had posters of his work in my college room. And um, and so uh, what's really special right now is that I didn't realize that, you know, it's possible that my great grandparents and his family um, interacted in, in Segundo Barrio in the Chamisal. My great grandfather came as a rebellious teenager in the late 19, 18, 19, 19 um, era. Would you say uh, the, the South part of El Paso is an untold story yet? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And um, I went to the heritage section of the library and found my great grandparents listed, which was fabulous. And I got to really um, sort of codify what I had heard through family stories, right, that they had come here as teenagers for different reasons, met, fell in love, started their family, but they were renters, right? They were renting tenements. And, uh. and from what I could tell, they were moving around the McGoffin, Willow, Bassett area for years. And then they wanted a house. And because of different reasons I, i'm sure their income he was a, at this point a railroad worker um and because of the lack of access to capital to buy a home in in that barrio in the chamisal they decided to move to juarez the railroad helped my grandfather go from being undocumented to having a lpr card yeah. so that he could commute right and his children were u.s citizens and so they bought a, a nice house in Juarez and also bought land and that land became my grandfather's where my mom was raised and then where I was raised. And so uh, I've learned early on the power of owning property, of creating generational wealth oh, yeah. and the fact that a lot of our South side communities and families haven't had that opportunity. And, and so what the work that I do now at Legal Aid, I mean, the best part of my job, I think, is when I deal with real estate cases, because I really help my, my clients break through the cycle of poverty and hold on to their properties. When I ran for mayor, I ran on, you know, um, keeping our property taxes affordable, because what I see is people who take on tax liens, who ha have tax deferrals and, and other things related to their property taxes that really rob future generations of wealth. Is your political career over? No. Ah, 
We'll see you again. Yeah, no, I'm, no, I'm right now the president of Justicia Fronteriza. It's a political action committee. So we're recruiting progressive candidates um, to run for different local offices. Interesting. So we're going to take a break here, Veronica Carbajal. Thank you for your story. We'll may ask you a couple more things about your book in, in uh, the ne- next half hour. Uh, taking a break here on the El Paso it's a radio show. Back in a moment. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to YouTube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan, near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. Hey, El Paso, Ivan Ochoa, General Manager from Sunland Park Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, and Fiat. I love the holidays. It's a time to be thankful for life and all its blessings. I'm thankful for you, our customers, and your families. As a gesture of gratitude, we're offering 0%, zero down on select new vehicles and no payments till February 2022. The Big Finish Sales event starts now at Sunland Park Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Fiat. For a limited time, get zero APR for 84 months, zero down, and make no payments until February 2022. Upside down in your trade? We want it. Even if you owe up to $10,000 more than your old car is worth. Plus, save thousands at the all-new Sunland Park Dodge Certified Pre-Owned Supercenter on every vehicle in stock with more arriving daily. All military personnel and all first responders receive an additional discount. Thank you for your service. Sunland Park Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Fiat, or buy the car. It's fun. At I-10 at Sunland Park Drive or online at SunlandParkDodge.com. Estamos en tu esquina El Paso. El Paso Strong. It was factory even a good discount plus TKL. Zero APR is 11 per thousand finance. On select vehicles with approved credit. Offers like the month. Love trivia. If you love the hugely popular Stuff You Should Know podcast, then the Trivial Pursuit game Stuff You Should Know edition is for you. With 600 questions, weird and unbelievable trivia in categories like myths, legends, and conspiracies. SYSK selects a mix of topics handpicked by podcast hosts Josh and Chuck. Give the gift of trivia this holiday. Find Trivial Pursuit the Stuff You Should Know edition at your favorite retailer or wherever you shop for board games. We've lost so many people to COVID. So many moms and dads, favorite uncles, older sisters, and best friends. But vaccines can help prevent serious illness and death from COVID in more than 9 out of 10 cases. So, now almost all COVID deaths are preventable, and so are the broken hearts they leave behind. We can do this. Find COVID vaccines near you at vaccines.gov. That's vaccines.gov. Paid for by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Looking for the perfect gift? Get them a shirt from Untuck It. Untuck It shirts are designed to be worn untucked. They're the easiest way to keep him looking sharp and feeling comfortable. You can't go wrong with their super soft flannels, wrinkle-free shirts, performance shirts with stretch, and cozy sweaters that are all perfect for right now. They even have a line for her. Find the perfect gift for every guy on your list at one of 80-plus Untuck It stores or at UntuckIt.com. Untuck It. Shirts designed to be worn untucked. I have an uncomfortable stat for you. One in nine men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer. One in nine. In fact, prostate cancer is the second leading cause of death in American men. That hurts to hear. But you know what doesn't? There's a simple blood test your own doctor can give you to see if you're at risk. And this blood test, called the PSA, is definitely not a pain in the butt to get. Don't waste your time poking around the internet. To find out more about this test, go to PCF.org. For all the best info on prostate cancer prevention, go to PCF.org today. El Paso's News Radio, 690 KTSM. And now let's turn back the pages of time and return to the El Paso History Show. Brought to you by Patrick Tuttle, Coldwell Banker Heritage Real Estate, 915-585-7777. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant, 6761 Donovan Drive. By Monterey Asset Management. By Mission Del Rey, 1421 Lee Trevino with El Paso souvenirs and gift shopping. 
by Keystone Heritage Park on Donovan Drive, 915-584-0563. Here again, El Paso History with Melissa Sargent and Jackson Pole. Just to let you know, we don't have live capacity in the next couple of weeks, so we're going to be doing some uh, pre-recorded shows uh, right here on uh, AM 690. An Encore History show next week about mil- with a military historian, John Hamilton. That's from early last summer. He'll be explaining several U.S. Army forts around El Paso in the 1800s. But again, I want to remind you about our sponsor, Mission Del Rey Southwest. They have a 20% off on all store and online purchases for our listeners, and this is now through Christmas. Use the coupon code El Paso Gifts as all one word, or mention the code at checkout when you're in the store or, their, or on their website. Also, same thing, missiondelray.com. And they're, like I said, stores, stores really well stocked. And uh, this is a great place to go shopping. You got to go. Unique gifts. Get, get, get away from the great usual stuff, stuff you there. find in the department store. Go to Pelicano. The easier way to get in is on, on yeah, that, it's, that it's, You can find it. It's easy to get there. It's just, it just sounds confusing, but it's easier than it is. But Fair yes, enough. Definitely go. They're good people. And uh, just real quick, um, Andrew J. Polk in the control room there. He's got a talk show here on this AM 690. Monday through Friday, 4 to 5 p.m. every weekday. Thank you for being there, dude. Appreciate what you do and uh, helping out El Paso with local talk, as we say here. A quick question here from... Uh, 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 Jorge, make it quick, Jorge, because it's off topic. What up? Yeah, Veronica, I want to thank you for running for mayor. You know, I want to say that myself, too. And um, I'm glad that you put out a book because I think that it helps address some of those issues that um, maybe our rural campaigns were addressing that um, inadequacy and that, uh, that sometimes is felt by the community because um, of things that once were that um, in some parts could possibly be, be still. And um, how I wanted to wish you a happy Hanukkah. Well, My family much. are all Jewish too in some aspects, and I want to you, wish Jorge. you second to last day of Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah in the community as well, all those to participate and enjoy the season as well as our Christmas season. Thank Thanks you. for calling, dude. Appreciate it. You take her easy. Interesting thing, we reached that's he's in Brooklyn, New York, apparently. Yeah. So it, it, it's it, the radio show has a reach here, which is kind of fascinating to understand here. But an interesting ride here to, to, to do this kind of stuff. All right, uh, where were we? We were going to go. You were going to finish one story for about, you got three minutes to finish a story. Oh, three minutes. Okay, well, um, <laughs> my gosh. Uh, I, so the book, if you're interested in, in finding it, it's um, Muñeca's Books is my imprint. Um, like how it's, I'm an independent um, publisher, self-publisher. And so Muñeca's Books.com um, and Muñeca's Books at Yahoo.com. Say that word slowly. What books? Oh, Muñeca. So oh. M-U-N-E-C-A-S. Ah. B O O K S. Muñecas. Muñeca. So muñeca means doll in Spanish, and that was a nickname that my grandmother gave to me when I was a baby. I was Aww. a very, I was a very cute baby. Um, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> oh, and it thing. stuck. My family much more. Uh, when I ran for mayor, I had to remind a lot of my family what my real name is because they know me as muñeca and, and nothing else. But <laughs> I gravitated towards books as a as a child, and my grandparents really fed that. You know, there's a story of me getting lost at the Kmart on Montana. Uh, my grandfather, my grandfather was like, you know, he was very dark, and he came back very pale and my grandmother said oh no you lost the baby and he's like I don't know where she is I went to the toy section I went to the I asked Alita to go to the bathroom I don't know where she is where were you like the book section I was on the floor I was about three years old and I was on the floor just sprawled no the books were all sprawled around me um and so they they knew that that was my thing which is really different you know my my mom um wasn't a reader like my you know so but I grew up watching my grandparents read the newspaper my grandmother read books and so I just grew up around it I think and I just loved listening Um, I'm an English language learner so my first language was Spanish Um, I didn't go to school until I was six um, because my mom wanted me to avoid the commute from Juarez to El Paso and so I really learned to listen and to listen to the way that people speak the intonation um, so that I could figure out what they were trying to say to me um, so I'm a huge believer in talking to children and talking to them using big words. Um, there was my first week at school at Hillside. Um, I had a little riff with the little boy and I, I told him, don't contradict me. And I was six, <laughs> ah! right? And he was like, what does that mean? And I, I grew up listening to my grandpa, my grandparents argue and my grandmother would tell my grandfather a lot, like, don't contradict me. So I knew these like long words because of it. But I do think that the more that we can speak to children um, in which is that they can understand but also without filtering yeah. reality the more we prepare them for the world and the more that we help them understand that the world really needs a lot of compassion that's really what we're we're craving um our world is asking us to be more compassionate towards it and towards each other um and often 
being compassionate means like, let's dig into the reasons why. Why do we have people who are homeless? Why do we have people who um, are going through domestic violence? Why do we have, um, you know, people who are working 40 hours a week, but still not able to pay for their rent um, or for their, their daycare? Those are the kinds of things that I really want us to start thinking about as a, as a society. Veronica Carbajal, thank you for your, what you do and very articulate uh, reasoning here. We're going to take a break here and come back in a minute. Are you ready for a break, Andrew Polk? Shall we? All right, back in a moment. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915 588 1850. Call him today. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate, call certified property manager Ray Baca, 915-592-4549. 592-4549. What's all the buzz about nasal irrigation and navage, navage, navage? And should I try it? Here's the science. Airborne germs invade through your nose. It's the body's air filter for trapping allergens and viruses. When your nose gets clogged, it's less effective and germs multiply. Eventually, your immune system can get overwhelmed and you get sick. Nasal irrigation is an effective, all-natural way to clean your nose. It's not a drug. It's more like plumbing. Saline goes in one nostril, around the back of the nose, and out the other nostril, flushing out mucus and germs. I'm Martin Hoke, and I invented Navage to make cleaning your nose easy. It's the world's only nose cleaner with powered suction. Navage pulls out the bad stuff so you can breathe better, sleep deeper, snore less, and feel healthier. At Walgreens, CVS, Rite Aid, Target, Bed Bath, and Walmart, or go to Navage.com for a free gift with purchase. Over 2 million sold. Navage, N-A-V-A-G-E. Clean nose, healthy life. If you're drowning in IRS debt and can't afford to pay, then you need to take advantage of special IRS tax programs that are available and free yourself from IRS collection efforts once and for all. Due to the financial hardship consumers are facing throughout the country, the Internal Revenue Service has made it easier to settle delinquent tax problems. An open phone line has been established by Community Tax for consumers to call and see if they qualify. Take down this number or store it in your cell phone, but call the Community Tax Helpline at 800-461-8937. If you owe back taxes to the IRS and cannot afford to pay them back, or even if you have years of unfiled tax returns, there's no need to fear anymore. But you have to call the Community Tax Helpline today at 800-461-8937 for the help that you need. Don't take on the IRS alone. They can attack your wages, savings, pension, home, and even your social security check. Call 800-461-8937 for your free consultation and to see if you qualify. That's 800-461-8937. I struggled with symptoms like frequent gas and stomach pain for years. I was bloated all the time with daily diarrhea. At first, I thought it was what I was eating. I kept thinking it was stomach issues. So I did my research and talked to my doctor, and we finally uncovered the truth. It, it was, was actually, actually EPI. EPI. Exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI, is a condition where your pancreas is unable to help break down your food. It can lead to symptoms like diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, unexplained weight loss, and oily stools. And EPI symptoms can be confused with those of other common digestive conditions like irritable bowel syndrome, Crohn's, and celiac disease. So getting to the right diagnosis meant being more open with my doctor about the severity of my symptoms and how often they were happening. But there's good news. EPI is manageable. So don't wait any longer. Use the symptom checker at identifyepi.com and schedule a visit or call with your doctor to ask, Could, could I, I have, have EPI? EPI? Sponsored by Abvi. News Radio 690 KTSM. And now let's turn back the pages of time and return to the El Paso History Show. Brought to you by Patrick Tuttle, Coldwell Banker Heritage Real Estate, 915-585-7777. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant, 6761 Donovan Drive by Monterey Asset Management. 
by Mission Del Rey, 1421 Lee Trevino with El Paso souvenirs and gift shopping. By Keystone Heritage Park on Donovan Drive, 915-584-0563. Here again, El Paso History with Melissa Sargent and Jackson Polk. All right, this week, go to El Paso Inc. and find the latest in El Paso business news. Who will be 2021 El Paso of the Year? Learn about this year's six nominees. Why El Paso Water is proposing to increase water bills. How the holiday season is inspiring El Pasoans to give back. El Paso's business journal, El Paso Inc., is available for home or business delivery. To receive El Paso Inc., order it online at elpasoinc.com. We're going to hear from our authors in the studio here in a bit, but we also have a guy uh, I asked to call in, Mark Calamia. Good morning. You can explain uh, a book on Z. Anthony Kruszewski. Yes, thank you, Jackson. This is Mark Calamia, and I'm a, a resident of El Paso. I'm, I'm a friend of Anthony's, and I wanted to share about his book. His new biography is just out. It came out last month, and the, the title of it is Borderlands Biography, Z. Anthony Kruszewski in Wartime Europe and Postwar America. It's a 391 hardback book that captures his life. Uh, for those of you that don't know him, he's a well-known uh, professor at UTEP, now retired. He's been in El Paso for over 50 years, and he's an internationally known and award-winning educator uh, at UTEP. Uh, so he he has been um, talking about his book. He's been, uh, uh, well, he's been to several cities already, and he's on tour right now in Buffalo, New York, Chicago, and Washington, D.C., before he gets back next weekend with his biographer. Um, the book really captures his um, life, uh, his wartime Europe experience, post-war America as well, and it, it talks about his life as a political science professor and uh, his focus on on um, various exploits, uh, including the, the Polish resistance. Uh, I know Jackson has had him there on the show before. Oh, we have, yeah. Where he's talked about his experiences during World War II. How do we get the book? Uh, as a Polish um, resistance fighter, yes. How do we get the book? Okay, the book can be obtained by sending right now a um, an order form. You can order the book from the publisher uh, at a discount, a thirty percent discount. Normally, it's one hundred and thirteen dollars, but because it's just out, it's hardback. But you can get it for seventy nine until December thirty first. And and the publisher is Brill Schnonick, but the that's a, a Dutch German publisher. But it is because it was early originally written in Polish and then translated into English by Beata. Halishka, who is the Polish author of his biography, and uh, you can get it from Connecticut by calling 860-584-6546. Again, that phone number is 860-584-6546, or you can go to their website, www.isdistribution.com. Very good. I'm not going to... Thank you for calling so in. I, I and encourage you to do that. It's exciting, and Tony's a great guy. So I think everybody would really love to see the history of this remarkable person. And he is living history, actually. Oh, he is. Yes, Another yes. book he's about an El Paso. All right, Mark, thanks for calling. We do appreciate it. And uh, good to talk to you. And we'll, we'll catch up with I'm you. I'm going to raise the price of my books. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I no, mean, no, you haven't been out there fighting, uh, you know, Germans uh, yet. So then you can raise it up a little bit. Well, yeah, it is amazing. That's uh, Jim Murphy. You also have CDs. Right. Uh, on my website, jamesrobertmurphy.com, there's music there that's uh, brand new. I have a new CD out called Park North. It's a jazz CD, and I have artwork on my site as well as my books. Excellent stuff. Jim Murphy, appreciate you Thank doing, you doing what you're doing. Also showing up today, interesting uh, oh. conversations here. How you got a couple more books to tell us about? Well, yeah, in addition to um, Buenas Noches El Paso and Muchas Gracias Maria, I have the Animal Alphabet album by Aunt Alice Alligator. It came out in 1995, and it's just been reissued in a hardback, and it goes through the alphabet. Tell me any letter of the alphabet, Jackson. Go ahead. D. 
Didn't darling Deanna dinosaur dance daintily with dangerous Dave the dragon during Danny Duck's delicious dinner? The answer is yes. See, that's yeah. six times okay. fast. <laughs> so we have that book here. We also have other books, like uh, we have a book on Manuel Acosta, a book on Tom Lee, a book on Jose Cisneros. We have a book that we published called The 89 Unknown Women Artists of El Paso. Uh, we have Harlequin books. Um, so I just want to give a plug, plug to Brave Books because they helped uh, uh, Veronica and I um, do the layout design. And all the books that we're talking about today are available at Brave Books. They're over there on Arizona. And they have regular hours. And also to remember, HalMarcus.com. If you want to go check us out on the website, HalMarcus.com. You got good stuff. Thank you. It's all about El Paso. All right. Where do we go from here? Veronica, you have another story about anything, something, uh, what you do. You you're, Explain your book and where to get it again. Um, so uh, Toma is based on my mom's childhood dog. Um, it, Toma means come here in, in Spanish or here as an offering um, in Spanish. And um, it is based on the fact that when the puppy was found in the trash pit, they had to lure it out using different things, toys, towels, um, hot dogs, and kept saying Toma, Toma. And so the name just stuck. And it's part of like the quirkiness of my family and, and sort of like the, um, you know, always living a little bit differently than, than most folks. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Juarez in El Paso. I was born in El Paso. I was born in South El Paso. Um, I barely made it across. My mom um, was uh, working here for a notary public and, uh, you know, worked on a Friday on a Saturday night. She started feeling contractions. Her water broke. She was in Juarez at her parents' house. She was unwed. Um, and my grandparents were like, you're going to stay with us. Um, so basically, um, my aunt rushed her over. It was Saturday night coming back from Juarez. And so she had to honk her way through the line, right through the, the bridge. And my mom had me a couple of hours later at the hospital. Oh, and so, uh, yes, yeah, and so, um, you know, I am. I, I, I've always understood um, how privileged I am to be a U.S. citizen and to come from U.S. citizens, that um, immigration has not been a struggle for us. That's why we've been able to commute back and forth. That's why I grew up in a middle class family in Juarez, um, because my mom worked working class jobs here at, at different places. And then she went to cosmetology school to try to get more income. And that's when my grandparents got sick with cancer. And that's what really shifted my interest in um, environmental um, studies because they were in their 60s. They were very healthy, but they both died of cancer, right? One after the other. And so um, when our planet is poisoned, our bodies are poisoned. And that's always stuck with me. And that's been part of, of what's influenced my work as well. And before all the violence and, and uh, the local and, the, um, and then the COVID hit, what was it like living in Juarez? Oh, my gosh. So, um, you know, what is I was born in 1976, and so we I still had wildlife around us, right? We the house is very close to the river, so um, I saw skunks, I saw different kinds of animals in our backyard, and um, and it was very different. We had an aldaba, which is basically like a, a latch on the door that we would that's all we used at night to you know to let like the breeze come in during the summertime. Uh, we never had a fence around the house. Um, we had I think one person who was drunk who like tried to get into the house because he was confused about which house he lived in but we lived very safely and I could ride my bicycle around the neighborhood now that neighborhood is is gated um, they have a security guard um, at the front it's changed a lot and when I came back from from college um, right before I went back to law school I I you know I fit the profile of the women that were being um, kidnapped oh and my. so I, I I was living in Juarez um, after college and so I you know I didn't have a car and so I walked a lot and I was always very mindful of the fact that that I fit that profile and I had to be very guarded and careful oh, that's a tough um, thinking yeah. yes yes so um you know, it, in some ways, I, I really miss those days because it really placed me in, in a position of, of empathy. And you, uh, as you said, your political career is not over. No, no. Um, you know, the late um, Enrique Moreno and then Carmen Rodriguez, who's who's still very active, um, both recruited me um, heavily to run for mayor. And I always told them I, I like being in the trenches. I like working for people directly. And they're like, yes, but the mayor the mayor's seat is we're really important. And we've never had a Mexican-American um, woman. We've only had four Mexican-American men um, be mayor and one woman. And so this is, it's a time plus because of your experience and the way that you see things, you're poised to be a good mayor. And um, I got 
kind of close to the runoff. Didn't quite make it, can but you, given how, how much we, we raised. Can you I stand think, all those meetings that you have to go to is it know, end, endlessly? Meetings are really <laughs> my, le that was a, the one thing I was afraid of because I really do not like meetings. And people who, <laughs> I, I manage people, you know, now. Those guys are on that thing all day and all night sometimes. Yes. And I, I you know, people that I work with know that if we're going to have a meeting, it has to be a working meeting. We have to get things done. We're not just going to meet to talk about the things we're going to do. But they go around oh, and around. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's How do you terrible. get through Good that? Good luck on that one. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think that there, sometimes the, the city staff just is given a lot of time to give presentations that I think are just kind of like not always to the point and not always, yeah. uh, you know, realistically reflecting what the people are concerned about. So I think there's something that has to get done about like, what is the point of this? Because public comments are limited to three minutes, right? Really, <laughs> the public is the one that should have, I think, uh, more time to really exactly. talk about the things that matter to them or for us to address that through the agenda. Uh, and to move swiftly through it. We may take a break here and come back. I guess social media that you've been looking at, either one of you? Oh, yeah, I've been bouncing around. BD Burdett's online. And uh, let's see, we've got, oh, Marshall Carter says hello from the mountain. She's out there hanging around. Uh, Angie Salazar's going to buy Mr. Garo's book when she's in town. She lives in Colorado, so she wants to get her book. And uh, just a lot of people out there listening in today. Uh, Ro Rose Rodriguez. Uh, see who else we got. Uh, Jimmy Coppinger, I think we mentioned earlier. Keith Erickson, a lot of great people out there. You got all, all people real interested in the history. Andrew, you got comments coming in? Uh, you're good. Okay, fair enough. Take it a break or come back. We'll come back and ask each of you to explain what you think about teaching El Paso history in the schools, mm -hmm. and how could how could we affect that? I mean, at this point, that's my harping on uh, topic at this moment. Back in a moment on the El Paso History Radio Show. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to YouTube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the Old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan, near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. Audible is the best place to listen for everything you're into, from comedy and motivation to popular podcasts and best-selling audiobooks. Right now, take advantage of a special holiday offer and save 60% on your first three months. Learn more and sign up at audible.com. There's stuff that your mom never told you. So join hosts Annie Reese and Samantha McVeigh of the podcast appropriately named Stuff Mom Never Told You. Each weekday, they discuss topics such as politics, history, and pop culture, all examined from an intersectional feminist lens. In our society, we do pressure people, especially women, to forgive since we've both gone through trauma. I just was so torn by it. I'm like, mm -hmm. what if I can't forgive? Listen to the Stuff Mom Never Told You podcast on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. Looking for something to do this weekend that's fun, interesting, and free? Come to the El Paso Mineral Gem and Jewelry Show at the Almeida Shrine Auditorium. See fossils, rocks, crystals, and gems of all kinds. Shop beautifully crafted jewelry and more. There's something for everyone to enjoy, so bring the whole family. Hours are 10 till 6 Friday and Saturday, 10 till 5 on Sunday, and parking is free. Brought to you by the El Paso Mineral and Gem Society. For more information, visit epmgs.com. Radio advertising can connect your business with holiday shoppers wherever they go. Use iHeart Ad Builder to create an affordable custom radio ad right on your phone. Just click, listen, approve, then hear it on the radio. Create your customized ad today at iHeartAdBuilder.com. Are you putting your retirement savings in a 401k or IRA? Then I have one word of advice. Stop. Experts agree the 401k has been a dismal failure, and even the man who invented it now says it's a monster that should be destroyed. 401ks and IRAs have major dangers, including fees that gobble up 50% of your retirement savings over time. The government controls your money and changes the rules anytime they want, and it gets worse. History confirms we're past due for a major market crash that can wipe out 50% of your savings again. Now, a free report from Bank on Yourself reveals where the inventor of the 401k puts his money. You're 100% protected from crashes. There are no fee surprises. 
and you control your money, not the government. Plus, your withdrawals are tax-free, which protects your savings from being devoured by taxes that can only get more monstrous. So get your report now at FreeReportFast.com. That's FreeReportFast.com. FreeReportFast.com. Ready or not, Christmas starts now. Right now. While Santa and his elves are hard at work, you can play iHeart Christmas Radio. 100% Christmas favorites, commercial free. Download the free iHeart app and take iHeart Christmas Radio everywhere you go. Or listen at home on your smart speakers. Just tell Alexa to play iHeart Christmas Radio on iHeart Radio. Hello. iHeart. Discover music, radio, and podcasts you'll love. iHeart Radio. News Radio 690, KTSM El Paso. And now let's turn back the pages of time and return to the El Paso History Show. Brought to you by Patrick Tuttle, Coldwell Banker Heritage Real Estate, 915-585-7777. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant, 6761 Donovan Drive. By Monterey Asset Management. By Mission Del Rey, 1421 Lee Trevino with El Paso souvenirs and gift shopping. By Keystone Heritage Park on Donovan Drive, 915-584-0563. Here again, El Paso History with Melissa Sargent and Jackson Polk. Got a lot going on here, Melissa. You have anything over there to announce? Oh, I just remind everybody, Keystone Heritage Park tonight for the Luminarias by the Lake. It's going to be a great event. It starts at 6 p.m., ends at 8.30. Wander around, look at the luminarios, and oh, yeah. hang out by the lake. Get some hot chocolate and cider we have there. And then also, uh, it's located at 4200 Donovan Drive in the Upper Valley between Sunland Park and Mesa. Cool. All right, we've got these authors in here. And uh, Hal Marcus, Veronica Carbajal, and uh, Jim, what's your last name? Murphy. 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 O, o. Murphy. O. Murphy. Well, uh, let's just ask each one of you. Uh, we've got a couple of minutes left here. Uh, your thoughts on the idea of giving El Paso gifts, first of all. I mean, why not? Well, then, you know, they how? talk about the, what's it called, the assembly line or the product line or whatever it is, how it's hard to get. Well, El Paso stuff is right here. It's always been right here. You never have any problems of picking up El Paso stuff. You know, that's what we've been talking about today. So, of course, shop local. Support your local artists and authors, musicians. And you got HalMarcus.com for your HalMarcus.com. stuff. HalMarcus.com. And you got a gallery there in Oregon Street. We have a gallery, 1308 North Oregon. We're open Tuesdays and Thursdays throughout the year and by appointment. And you can shop online. What's your phone number? It's uh, 533-9090. And there you are. Uh, Jim Murphy, your thoughts on teaching El Paso history and uh, give us your website when you can. Well, I, I think it's important. Uh, I don't know how they would fit it in, actually, to the curriculum. But I, you know, if they could squeeze it in there somehow and teach local history, that'd be a wonderful thing. There's no doubt about that. There's so much history here, as we all know. We've been doing our best here for a long time. Oh, yeah. And, you know, we'll keep trying. And your website for your uh, your books and your CDs? JamesRobertMurphy.com. RobertMurphy.com. Fair enough. Okay. And Veronica, your thoughts on uh, El Paso history? Oh, I'm a huge believer. As I mentioned before, I, I learned a lot of my personal history through direct contact with my great-grandparents and my grandparents, but not everyone has that luxury. And and so I think that it's really important for us as a community to talk about all of our history, right? The history of um, our Syrian Jews, our Mexican-Americans, um, our, um, you know, white or Anglo um, uh residents um are, are african americans um fort bliss like there's just so much history here and i think that when we were talking about how do we combat injustice and white supremacy and racism i mean those things thrive on ignorance and so when we're able to imbue our curriculums with local history we're combating that as well as like showing people why there's so much to be proud of and and understanding both the history but also some of the things that we need to fix within our community and i think the fight um, by by conservatives with critical race theory demonstrates just how important it is, right? If it wasn't important, they wouldn't be trying to erase this history and these hard topics from the curriculums. That's too bad that we go the way we do sometimes, but uh, any, other thoughts from any of you? What are you thinking, Al? Well, uh, Veronica touched on an important thing. The key to this stuff is having pride in our community. And I think that James, Veronica, and, and my work especially – it makes us proud to be a part of El Paso. This is a very unique place on the planet, and we have to embrace that. We have to know our history, and we have to honk our horn as much as possible. So uh, taking pride in our community is key uh, to a better future. 
Well, there's so many layers of things. You have Keystone, oh, which is a very unusual location. Keystone, Concordia Cemetery. Concordia. Look at Concordia. That's the biggest history book you have in town. It's 65,000 people I just, there. Look at all the events that have gone on here that are just not known very much outside of here. And, and inside of here, the individuals really don't know about them that much. And that, to me, is a shame. We've been doing the best we can for years. Well, I've always thought El Paso <laughs> is not very good at promoting itself. Yeah. El Paso promoted Juarez. And, and now that Wars is shut down, El Paso really doesn't know how to bring people yeah. to El Paso. They put up the digital wall, but they never promoted the digital wall. You know, there, there are certain things El Paso has to grab onto and say, this bring yourself to El Paso because of these reasons. And I don't think the city is very good at promoting. And that. also our history is so layered, it's kind of hard to get a grasp on what it is. Because, you know, you talk about Pancho Villa, that's kind of a negative, nasty, but it's real. Mm -hmm. And some people think gunfighter history is, is not that great, but it happened here big time. It's history. It is. Good and or bad, like you, you say, you have, you have to learn You just good need and bad. to talk about it. So that's kind of the problem here. Some people say, oh, I don't like guns, so we're not going to do that. Yeah. You know, and well, so what? I mean, it, it happened here. And we, we had better gunfight history, if you'll call it better, uh, than Tombstone. They had the book. <coughs> they had the movie. In fact, I just saw a, a statement from uh, an Indian gentleman, and it was, you know, learn before you protest. That's one of my problems with a lot of people when they start to you know, talk about El Paso. This, this. Learn about the history first. Yeah. Then you know, and then you know how to work at it better to get it done correctly. And that's that's the biggest problem we have. Well, it's people don't learn. It's certainly been fun, you know, doing what we do here for so many years. And it's an interesting history uh, just from what we have done and, and, and putting together this radio show. Yeah. Hal Marcus, thank you for coming in here. Thank you. Veronica Carvajal and Jim Murphy, appreciate you. And uh, good luck with your book sales. Yeah, I do hope that great. works out for you. And I'm I'm going to Peppy's. I'm just yeah, going to go get Bernie and I got to go up there real quick. Grab we head over to Keystone. Yeah. yeah, grab something to eat. And you got another big event at Keystone coming yeah. again. I'll and, be at the gate. Come see me. I'll be the one handling the money. <laughs> indeed, Andrew J. Polk. Thank you for what you do. Talk El Paso thank Monday you. through Friday, and that yeah, another <laughs> another radio guy got his wings yeah, when he can hear that bell. <laughs> thank you a lot, Andrew. We'll see you all. Merry Thanks. Christmas Take and care. a happy New Year to everyone. Indeed. Happy happy oh, you said happy Hanukkah. And Take care, guys. Thanks. Thank bye bye. You. Thank you for listening to the El Paso History Show. We hope you'll join us again next Saturday morning, 10 to noon, and be sure to tell a friend about us. Sponsored by